Entertainment Technology Center's Building Virtual Worlds Show and Extravaganza. Here at Carnegie Mellon, this show has become as much a staple of the holiday season as the Jolly Fat Man. And since we don't have a Jolly Fat Man, I'm up here. My name's Don Marinelli. It is my privilege to be co-director of the Entertainment Technology Center, a place where playing is work and we work hard to play. I would like to welcome a number of VIPs who are joining us Today, first and foremost, the Entertainment Technology Center would not exist if it wasn't for the vision and the insight and the wisdom of our leadership, President Jerry Cohen and Provost Mark Camlet. Let's give them a round of applause. I would also like to welcome a number of guests from the industry who have joined us, and by the industry, when you're in entertainment technology, that can be anything, but it's a lot of gaming people, it's a lot of VR people, and things of that nature. So we would definitely like to welcome Chris Crawford, who is the author of the famous book and are one of the Bibles of what we do, The Art of Computer Game Design. We would like to welcome Andrew Tepper from eGenesis, Tom Voigt from Chem Image. Uh, Jason Lentz, one of our alums who stuck around, talk about economic development, and is working with Demiurge. We would like to welcome a, a good friend, Drew Davidson, who just became the new head of the Game Art and Design Program at the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, who have worked with us on a number of occasions, and we consider them kindred spirits. We definitely want to welcome Evan Weimer from MediaPool, another new technology company that is working with the Entertainment Technology Center. And we would like to especially welcome Miles Berkman, whose generosity, the family generosity with the Berkman Faculty Development Grant, allowed us to continue our development of an open source uh, animation and game engine called Panda 3D through Jesse Shell, one of our faculty members, and his very astute Panda 3D team. We're working together with researchers at Walt Disney Imagineering. We've been able to really turn this into a powerful engine that is free, that anyone can download as we democratize game design. When we talk about the Entertainment Technology Center, and especially those of you that maybe just come here uh, this, this one day to see the building virtual worlds, you are familiar with the virtual reality that we do. But I'm here to point out some of the other projects and ways in which the Entertainment Technology Center is actually the Education Technology Center, as well as being the Experience Technology Center. If you take a look at the owl above me, that is the logo for the immersive classroom experience, which was an immersive classroom that we did for the National Aviary. That was a project that was funded by no less than the United States Congress, and we now have children going to the aviary where they are immersed in this environment that's commensurate with the birds they are studying. Next to it, you will see a firefighter. That is from a game that you'll be hearing more about later called Biohazard which is funded by no less than Microsoft for the express purpose of using games to teach, using games to train first responders of weapons of mass destruction attacks how to respond to, in this particular instance, a terrorist assault in a mall. This is part of what is called games to teach, as we know that those of you out there are quite used to gaming and interactivity and technology and continue to wonder why it isn't more of a staple in the classroom. We're changing that. Next to it, you will see a scene from our Jamma Drum, developed by Bean, Tina Blaine, one of our faculty members who joined us from California. The Jamma Drum is a phenomenal technology that allows the ETC students to create games where the intention is collaboration. You will then see a picture of Alice. Alice is the software developed by Randy Pausch and his team at University of Virginia, and of course here at Carnegie Mellon, that is now being used to turn 
young girls on to the ease. It's a, yeah, I, I just. Yeah. How does one recover from? I feel like I should have a glove and start moonwalking. Uh. <laughs> Moving right along. Between Alice and our balloon, you will see the animateering project. That is no less than using the MIDI. Boy, I skipped over, Alice. Uh, that's no less than a project that we're doing that took the MIDI code and adapted it for video. And what we did was create a real-time animateering software for the Pittsburgh Children's Museum, where kids will be able to come in and create their own puppet shows from characters that are part of the Children's Museum's famous puppet collection. Right now, we installed that just a few days ago under the, the uh, leadership of Brenda Harger, and it's immensely successful. Panda, I already talked about. Beneath that, ah, you'll see the pirates. That happens to be a program that we created for the mini Omnimax at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History called the Earth Theater, where what we did was bring our interactive technologies to make that a give and take. Beneath that, you will see cybersecurity. In fact, one of the first projects we ever did in the Entertainment Technology Center was use technology to create a game to teach individuals who are going to be protecting our cybersecurity how to recognize attacks on the system. And then on the far right, or far left, you will see three characters who are part of a project we did for human resources. One in where we use the synthetic interview technology to teach individuals, especially new hires here at Carnegie Mellon, all about rules and regulations regarding, uh, you know, sexual harassment, and like, like what I just did with Alice. The last thing you see down there is Doc Beardsley. One of the things we love about entertainment technology is the fact that it crosses all boundaries. And so working with our own renowned school of the Robotics Institute, one of the things that we were able to do was create a robot that you could have an interaction with. Doc is a robot that you can speak to, that has audio, that has vision, and it's just an example of the range of things that we do here. See what happens when you bring drama people together with left-brainers? Which is a perfect segue to why I'm really up here, and that is to introduce the man who is my co-director, my good friend, someone that I admire tremendously, and who at least one day a year gets to see what it's like to be in show business. So without further ado, I would like to introduce my partner in crime, my most favorite geek, Randy Pausch. tonight. <laughs> Welcome to our show. That will be the first of many Pratt Falls disasters and other problems you will get to experience. How did this course start? This course started in 1995. I took a sabbatical at Walt Disney Imagineering. I found that artists plus technologists together could do amazing things. And this course was born and it's very simple. We take teams of students from different disciplines. We put them together in small teams, four or five people. We give them a very short period of time, two weeks, and they build the kind of things you're going to see tonight. In the course, they do five rounds. So they'll be assigned with three teammates. They'll have two weeks. They'll make a virtual reality world. Then we reshuffle the class. They never see anybody twice, and they make another world. So one, two, three, four, five. You're going to see worlds drawn from throughout the semester. Most of them are final project rounds, but not all. And the one thing I will tell you is that we have a lot of points of failure tonight. We've had hardware failures all day long. So when worlds fail, and I say when, not if, we will go to a backup videotape, which is all prepared. The uh, VCR has been fixed. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> uh, one thing I do want to say is that if you, have, uh, uh, if you have any inclination to get a master's of entertainment technology, we're your guys. 
and you can apply to the ETC online. Your program has all the information. Also, if you would like to be in this course next year, if you open up your church bulletin, you will find inside a handy dandy form that says, gosh, yes, I'd like to know more. Very briefly, briefly, for those of you who don't know, the Entertainment Technology Center has moved down on the ri We are down by the river. And it's in the building that, good, a few Saturday Night Live fans. It's uh, in the building that used to house CMRI. This is what the building looks like. This is the view from the building. It is probably the best view in all of Pittsburgh. The space we have, this is a more typical view our students see, uh, we have incredible resources down there. We have two computer clusters, each of which is the size of the CFA cluster you may be familiar with, that's exclusively for the use of this class. There are four working VR setups, a whole bunch of stations like this. You get there by the bus. Everybody, big it for the bus. All right. And we'd really like to thank the provost's office for providing that bus. So. Uh, this is what you'll typically see, students working together in small teams. We use the best technology we can. All of our machines have two monitors on them, for example, because why not? Uh, I, I really don't know what to say about that. Uh, or that. There are only two rules on content for the course. They can make anything they want, except no pornography and no shooting violence, and no worlds that combine the two. This led to a lot of worlds where people use swords. <laughs> or power drills. <laughs> or I don't know what. <laughs> people work very hard in this course. But they make new friends. <laughs> And at the end of the day, it's just wonderful to have a course where people are bringing their relatives in to show them what they've made. You go, girl. All right. What we're going to do now is uh, one last piece of technology. I love to show off for our guests just how technology enabled Carnegie Mellon is. So everybody who has a pager or a PDA or a cell phone or something, would you pull it out for a second and hold it up? If we get the house lights to show this off, I just want to show what a large percentage of our people have these things. Okay. Now, while you have them in your hand, please turn them off. OK? Little head fake there. OK. Stella! OK. All righty then. Uh, as I said, we're going to have lots of technological failures. And uh, when we do, we'll go to videotape. There's no shame in that. All right? We're going to begin over here on stage left. Uh, Elio is uh, one of our most determined students. He, in fact, suffered through mononucleosis during the semester. Yeah! And that's something I'd like everybody who'll be in that head mount after him to think about. All right. We give you our first world bed rocking.
Hey, Wilma, I'm home. <laughs> Wilma! Never did trust that Barney guy. Our next world will be performed stage left. Are we ready, Rob? Yeah. All right, rock out, dude. Oh, man. I've lost the rhythm, the beat to my drum. Remember, four or five students, two or two and a half weeks. That's what produces each of these pieces you're seeing tonight. And by the way, they're all running on a commodity $1,000 PC. There's no big fancy hardware here. Now, the Flintstones, that's fun. It's kind of a racing thing. And this is a big action thing. This is what VR is really good for. But what VR is really hard to use for is complex narrative or particularly ethical dilemma. And so I really applaud the next group for going after a very difficult piece here, and I think to a great degree pulling it off. Final judgment.
House lights up. All right, in just a minute, we're going to do something we have never tried before. These worlds are being performed by the students who wrote them, but one of the assignments this year was to make a world so intuitive and so easy to use that anybody could walk in off the street and use it. So would anybody here like to try a VR world? Okay. Enthusiasm. All right. The world does involve violence and the use of a large sword. Does that bother anybody? No. Okay. So what I'm going to do to prove that this is a random choice is anybody who wants to, put your hands in the air. All righty, and I'll see if I can get it out randomly. Pretend you're a Cubs fan. Okay, come on down. And your team will never be in the World Series. Okay. So they're going to take him down, and in a, in a moment or two, he's going to get to try it out. All right, are we ready over here? All right. Our next world is going to be a little bit unusual. Normally, we put a human in the head-mounted display. This time, we're going to put a puppet in the head-mounted display. Menomina. Phenomena. 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 Menomena. 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 Phenomena. 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 The, uh, the next world is going to be performed uh, by Neo, who is from Thailand. We talk about diversity a lot at this university, and I think it's important to note that this is a uh, this is a world made by five students from Thailand, Turkey, India, the US, and Nigeria. So, and I think you're about to see one of the things that is common across all those cultures. Are we ready? Here we go.
Okay, and now we work without a net. For the first time in history, an out of the audience, honest to God volunteer. Welcome, Carrie. And uh, we're glad to have you here, I think. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the students are about to get you suited up. <coughs> Don't mind the lasers. That's good. All right, we're good? All right, we're mic'd. We can hear your innermost thoughts and feelings. Sure. And uh, are you ready? I'm ready. What's the name? Carrie. All right. world our next <laughs> I never know our next world has a bit of a surprise ending and not until then will you find out who is in the head mount
time. It's time. It's peanut butter jelly time. Not everything has to make sense, you know. <laughs> so, VR's silly, VR's about killing, VR's all this crazy video game stuff. The ETC has a very serious side, as Don alluded to earlier, and now Jesse Schell, who is a faculty member who came to the ETC after seven years at Walt Disney Imagineering, where he left as the creative director of their virtual reality studio. And he's someone we're just tremendously thrilled to have here at Carnegie Mellon. And it's only the flexity of a school, flexibility of a school like Carnegie Mellon that lets us bring somebody with these kind of talents into the academy. Jesse is going to talk to you about one of our projects at the ETC called Biohazard. Welcome, Jesse. All right, I just want to talk about this a little bit. Um, this is a very exciting project. We've seen a lot of stuff that we've done tonight, you know, for pure entertainment value. And uh, this is just to show that video game technology can be used in other ways. Entertainment technology can be used in all kinds of ways. The whole point of the Biohazard Project is to take video game technology and use it to train firefighters how to deal with terrorist attacks. Um, normally, the way firefighters train, they train two ways. They sit in a classroom and people tell them things. That's one way, and the other way they often do these very large training sessions where they'll, uh, they'll get like dozens or hundreds of actors and they'll, uh, they'll shut down a subway station for a day and they'll do a lot of training there. What video game technology allows us to do is to find something in the middle. So what we decided to do was we created a network classroom. It's very simple, you just have PCs at every station. You bring in a bunch of firefighters who work with each other every day anyway. You have them sit down and go on team missions together while an instructor can walk around, watch what they're doing, and critique them as they do it. So they sort of get hands-on training at a much lower cost than hands-on training typically uh, runs. So I'm going to show you a video here that intercuts uh, footage of, uh, of the simulation that we made along with footage of some volunteer firefighters working with an instructor in our uh, simulated network classroom. Can we get some sound on this? All right, stay together and work as a team. You try and remember how many people you saw, so when you come out, you'd be able to give the officer or, or somebody an idea. I think there were five, six people. You guys go upstairs. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's go. Because if something permeates your gear, your body's your way out. You go up, something explodes. How are you going to deal with that? Now you have a you have a biohazard, and you have a secondary fire. You can stay in the doorway while the other one goes in. So 
So this has been an absolutely wonderful project to work on. We're going to be continuing to work on it uh, this year. The next step is to try and we've been doing tests. We're br uh, bringing in uh, firefighters and doing sort of uh, simulated training sessions. We're now going to try and integrate it into a real curriculum. It really seems like this kind of training is definitely going to be a key part of the future of firefighter training and uh, many other types of training. So we're very excited about it. Randy, I'm going to hand it back to you. All right. Thank you very much. You ready, Josh? Ready as you're ever going to be. All right, Josh is one of, uh, one of the many art majors in the class. And, hey, Josh. And he's going to be performing a world that's extremely unusual. Normally, we have one head-mounted display with a performer in it, and they drive a world. He's going to do something that hasn't quite ever been done before. He's going to simultaneously drive two worlds, which you see projected up here side by side. Okay, so if I get the house lights up again, that lost audience participation went so well, we're going to try it again. All right, looking for first a guy. Who said aw? You'll get your frickin' turn, all right? All right, I'm looking for a guy. All right. All righty, come on down. All right, now in a phrase that will horrify my wife, I'm looking for a gal. All right. Students in the class are ineligible, <laughs> but, but they can hand them to any of their relatives who are here. Try again. There we go. All right, come on down. Thanks. They'll be, they'll be taking you backstage, and in a moment, the two of you are going to participate in a shared world where you'll be in the world together via the wonderful powers of networking. Uh, the way this course works, as I said, is there are five rounds. The first round isn't really virtual reality. It's kind of a warm-up. They build something for the keyboard, mouse, and monitor. So what we're going to do now is show you a world that was done in the very first round. It'll be presented via videotape because we don't have any way to perform it on VR. And this, I like to show rounds, round one worlds because it really underscores what I always say. I don't teach anybody anything. This is like a four-gender dating club. I just bring people with different talents together and introduce them. And the proof is in the pudding when the first two weeks of the semester they make something like this. So can we roll tape on Le Fashion Disaster? I used to think that love was just a lot of rubbish, a mess of cabbage. Hello, new assistant. Welcome to La Belle Air, where only the most beautiful, fabulous, always glamour stars come to become even more beautiful. I'd like a haircut, please. Shave that man thing. Huh? Okay. I want 
Welcome to BBW, where even the videotapes crash. <laughs> One moment, please. We are now going to play a network game. I think some of you will recognize it. It used to be a very popular two-dimensional game. And now we're going to use the magic of the third dimension. Are we ready? Game on. All right, now we come to my personal favorite part of the show, and it's the only part that isn't scripted. The students do not know what's about to happen in this part. One of my personal pet, be sort of pet peeves about American education and education in general is that we channel our students towards the safe. Here's the right answer. Here's the way to get it. You know, stand on the line, walk the right way. And I think we really do our students a disservice. One of the things I like about Carnegie Mellon more than most universities is we encourage our students to try things and take great risks. So I have historically always given an award in this class which I've called the Best Failure Award. It's for the student team that comes up with a world that just doesn't work, but you'd never have known that till you built it. This year, based uh, on the suggestion of one of the students, Madhura, who suggested, you know, there's a better name for this. This should be called the First Penguin Award after the fact that when a bunch of penguins are on an ice floe and they need to get into the water, but there might be things in the water that eat penguins, <laughs> somebody has got to be the first penguin. <laughs> and we applaud those people. This year's first penguin award, frankly, was very hard to pick because there were so many great choices. <laughs> Sometimes it seemed that I was doing nothing but coming into a classroom with waves of penguins diving into icy water. But in the end, I decided to go with a group that very early in the semester tried something not only risky, but not only risky to themselves in their grade, but risky to someone else, the participant. Uh, they built a, uh, a free fall simulator. And we knew it was going to be kind of tricky to perform, so uh, I asked a PhD student. And uh, fortunately, I have a PhD student who used to perform uh, with Ringling Brothers Circus, so he's a trained acrobat. And that's him looking very, very um, corpse-like in the middle. So I'd like to thank Stephen Osmond, and I'd like to thank all the members of this group. If you could come down and receive your first Penguin Award. <laughs> 
Congratulations. So, our next world, are we guys ready over here? All right. Almost. People often ask, what do you need to do to get into the what do you need to do to be good at virtual reality? Well, uh, let's see, Melanie is, uh, her undergraduate major was in journalism because that makes sense. VR is about telling stories. She's also the captain of the ETC intramural soccer team. So. And she'll be performing Hello World. Oh, hello there. <laughs> I'm lonely. Make me a world. <laughs> Yay! All right, we're gonna set up for uh, another one of those audience interaction pieces. This is our last audience participation one of the evening. Now the first time, we have the house lights up a little bit. Uh, the first one I was looking for uh, somebody who liked violence, and then the second time I was looking for a guy, 
and the third time I was looking for a girl. This time I'm looking for a university president. That's really good, okay. Uh, all right, uh, meantime, we're gonna show another piece that uh, again has to be shown via video and it's called, are we ready? Ready for Last Leaf on video? It's called The Last Leaf. That's better. All right, you Mexican. Yeah. And now, for the first time in history anywhere, ladies and gentlemen, a university president in virtual reality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Ready, go! Yeah, 
game over. Absolutely terrific. Terrific. All right, Neil, can you follow that act? Yes. <laughs> As you're about to see, Neo is intense, and for a very good reason. Our students give their all for the course. Okay, are we ready? Where's Peter? You ready? You good to go? You, uh, you just gonna fire it up and let it go or do you want me to set it up? All right, I think it's great that you know one or two people got to play. I think it's wonderful the president got to play, but now you're all gonna get to play at once. Sure is clear up here. Exactly. And look at that. There's the current. We should be there in no time. <gasps> ah! This is bad, Dory. Hey, watch this. Boing, boing. <gasps> boing Dory! Boing, boing. All right, listen to me. I, I have an idea. Uh -huh. A game. Whoever can hop the fastest out of these jellyfish wins. Okay, on your mark, get set. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, hold on there, dudes. Intro, Slosh the Turtle here. I'm Crush's brother, and I'm gonna train you. Pass the ball as fast as you can around the theater to steer Mealy Man, but don't let him hit anything. That would be sub-level, dudes. Now, let's try some cuckoo kachu. Get Marlin as low as you can by moving the ball to the bottom of the theater. Now get him to the top! Most excellent! Now left! Righteous, righteous, and right. You so totally rock. Looks like a fine time to dodge the jellies. Ready, set, go. Wait a minute. We'll shoot and death now. That's what we're doing. We're having fun at the same time. I can do this. Just be careful. Yeah. 
Careful I don't make you cry when I win! No, oh, I don't think so! Thanks. All right. Seema, you ready? Yeah. OK. Now, Seema will be performing in a fairly musical context. Uh, she did her undergraduate work at UC Berkeley in computer science, and then she got the light and came here. <laughs> this is another one of our worlds where the, uh, the five student team represents four different countries. You ready? Take it away. So now you know what all nations have in common. <laughs> all righty. You may have noticed a very large device behind me on stage throughout the evening. Are we ready? I, I hope. <laughs> you better, because you built it. All right. <laughs> Unveil the Orbitron. Behold the world's largest mouse input device. <laughs> this has been cleared through campus. Okay, 
All right, he will actually be controlling this world by using his ability to change the position and orientation of his body through nothing but shifting his weight. All righty. Are we ready? Begin. Wow. God, I love this university and these students. Before we go to our last world, there are just a few people we want to thank. This course wouldn't be possible without companies like Right Hemisphere, who donate all their software for doing things like painting of the textures. Intel donated all the computers for the use in this class. I'd like to thank all the faculty members in the Entertainment Technology Center and all of the second year students who've helped us I'd like to particularly thank Jesse Shell, who has contrib contributed creatively so much to guide the students in ways that I could never myself. <laughs> I'd like to particularly thank Dennis Cosgrove, because of, as of uh, <clears throat> 60 minutes before showtime, we didn't have working hardware on stage, and Dennis came in and did surgery. So that was something I can never thank him enough for. The man behind the curtain you haven't seen who's made sure that things went so smoothly tonight, and believe me, by BVW standards, this has been smooth. Come out and take a bow, our stage manager, Will Bosley. Where are you? Are they right? Thank you so much. I'd like to thank the teaching assistants for this course. If you could all stand and be recognized, please stand up, get the house lights up. Come on out. And one last person where I just don't know if any of us and the students will ever be able to thank him enough. All of the times he stayed up all night to stay with students who needed help, all the times he made sacrifices in his personal life to make sure that this course was as good as it could be, our head teaching assistant, Dave Salba. We're about to go to our last world. 
On a personal note, I said this course started when I went on sabbatical to Walt Disney Imagineering. Well, it's time for me to go away again. I'm going to be spending the spring semester working at Electronic Arts on sabbatical, so hopefully we'll be able to come back and do something to bump it up a notch when I'm back from there. And I'm really looking forward to it. Are we ready for our last world? All righty. The first ever documentary shot in virtual reality. Well, hello there. You know, most people think that virtual reality was invented in the 1980s, but actually it has a rich and stimulating history dating back to the beginning of time. In 8500 BC, prime numbers were carved in 1956. And there it is, virtual reality, the way of the future. I'm glad you asked. Unfortunately, the future takes place in the future. Put on the head-mounted display, or HMD, to experience the virtual virtuality of virtual reality, the wave of the future. Welcome and congratulations. Virtual reality is sweeping the nation. But I thought virtual reality was for squares. Squares, you say? Remember, virtual reality is in the third dimension. Go we! That's right, Wally. Why don't you put on an HMD and try it for yourself? Gosh, this is heavy. Compare the crude 3D attempts of yesterday with the advanced technological marvels of today. So what can we do with this new technology? In the future, you'll be able to experience virtual travel to exotic new places, like Hawaii. This doesn't look like Hawaii. Why don't you use your imagination? I sure am hungry. Silly Wally, put down that weenie. In virtual reality, you can experience a whole smorgasbord of virtual food from across the globe. This doesn't taste like chicken. This tastes like shit. It's sweeping the nation. Woo! What's malnutrition? <clears throat> the wave of the future. Oh boy! I love malnutrition. You can also meet new people from strange and alien cultures. Does God love them too? Or create your own people using the magic of modern technology. With all these people, there's bound to be a war. But wait, future wars will all be fought in virtual reality. Kids, cover your eyes. Adults, you can look forward to virtual sex. But I thought emotions were bad. Well, you're right. But in virtual reality, virtual emotions are okay. Ah, duh. Oh yeah, baby. That's right. That's the spot. Oh yeah! That's the way I like it! Woo -wee. It sure feels good to be inside. Virtual reality? Jesus! Virtual reality is sweet! But it sure is good to be back in the real world! Hold your horses there, eager McBeaver. You're in virtual reality right now! But I thought I was a real boy! <laughs> Silly Wally. Just look at all those people watching you in virtual reality even as we speak! 
me. Yes, sir. Virtual reality truly is a modern marvel for the whole family to enjoy. So watch out, television. Watch out, motion pictures. Watch out, Wally. Virtual reality is here to stay. So in closing, this course really has nothing to do with virtual reality. It's all about learning to work with people from different disciplines, different backgrounds, different countries, different outlooks, and seeing what you can do together as a team. Because that's the only way to build something bigger than you can do by yourself, is to team with different kinds of people. Uh, just an incredible set of students to work with. I just can't tell you what a joy it is. Right after the show, if you step out and exit through the Conan room, we have some cookies and punch. Feel free to talk with any of the students. They're easy to identify. They're wearing these stylus BVW t-shirts. Yay. So thank you all for coming and join with me one last time for thanking these students for such an incredible semester.